Good morning. Uh, my name is Wayne Stratman, and um, I'm here at uh, Corning Studio um, to demonstrate uh, my field expertise, which is working uh, to turn electricity into light through the medium of glass. And um, to do this, uh, we're going to be shaping uh, a glass sculpture today uh, in a variety of different ways. We're going to be using the, the glass lathe here going to be using a, a, a hand torch and uh, combining some techniques to make a, a, essentially a vessel. Um, and we'll take that vessel and we'll uh, evacuate the air and we'll put gases in it and light it up with a high voltage, high frequency power supply. This is assuming everything goes well. Um, typically, uh, this type of sculpture uh, really can't make in, in hours time. So, well, I've done it a little bit cooking class fashion. We've got some things uh, that I'm going to show you how they're made, but then they're already pre-annealed, uh, a finished piece, and we'll use those to combine to make the final sculpture. So the first piece I'm going to make uh, right now is on the lathe, and this is going to be a, a floor base, or a tabletop stand, basically, to hold the sculpture. So um, this is a glass blower's lathe, and um, In. So I've got a one inch piece of medium wall tubing and I'm attaching a blow hose out the end of it so that I can blow. And I'm going to take and uh, seal on a Pyrex borosilicate uh, electrode on the, the end. This is where the energy is going to be put into the uh, sculpture. Change classes. Mm. So right now I'm going to flare out the, the glass from the Pyrex electrode to meet the one inch tubing. Slightly smaller one of these, you know. Thank you.
I've made a seal and now I'm going to make a large Maria. Now I'm going to <clears throat> seal on another piece here that will act uh, eventually as the flare for the, uh, the base. So this is a stopper with a swivel. And let's see. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> Luckily, we have another one of these already made. <laughs> Little problem with the lathe. Get another piece made there. So luckily we already had a piece made and annealed. Okay. <clears throat> Does this work? Does that work? I want it. Does it work? It does. Okay. It's possible. Yes. <clears throat> It'll do.
I've got to gently heat the uh, piece of the electrode on because it's got a big solid Maria there. It takes a while to heat up. Doesn't seem to do much. It's not working. It needs more air. Okay. You need one of those little tungsten carbide cutters. Thank you. Little tungsten carbide cutters. Knives. Yeah.
I'm going to make now a little hole for uh, the future wire that will be on this piece. I'm actually going to size it for the size of a, an electrical jack that will be connected to it. Okay, now this piece will go right in the annealer. Over here. You want to turn it on. And now we're going to change locations and take a, um, a floor stand that's already made and start making some of the sculpture. Uh, let's see. This. My blow hose there, please. Okay, so right in front of me now, I have a uh, piece that's been uh, made uh, and annealed. Uh, the reason I really couldn't work with the one I just made in the lathe is because this, this seal here is very highly strained, and unless you keep it warm or anneal it, it's probably going to crack. So the, the function of this, not only the obvious is hold the piece up, but uh, a wire will go to an electrical jack right here and when it's sitting like this, all the wiring is completely covered and very, very safe. So now I'm going to do some uh, flame working on this. And um, the type of flame working I do, uh, since I was completely self-trained, I never actually trained on uh, bench burners. And I've learned everything using hand torches. And I found over the years that it's given me a lot more flexibility in that with a, a bench burner, you pretty much are stuck to, uh, you're limited to pieces that you can hold. Whereas with a hand torch, I can build literally from the ground up and make sculptures that are 8, 10, 12 feet high if I want to just by uh, adding more and more pieces. So right now, I'm going to try to show you how I make some organic forms on this base. Now one thing um, people would say, well where do you do we actually glass blowing? We're actually going to take and start pulling off the first organic form and that's going to be where the, the blow tube will be from this point on. Assuming everything goes well. By the way, before I get started, I'm using a Ranger torch, which is an older, and an older version of it with a wooden handle, which is a round handle. It makes it easier to turn with your fingertips. Um, 
And that's important for the work I'm going to be doing here in a second. This is just a uh, scrap piece of glass. Just allow me to blow. I'm just gonna bending this out of the way for a moment. Eventually this was gonna be replaced. So I'm using, um, ideally I wanna use medium weight uh, wall tubing. And right, right now I've got heavier weight and that should work fine. And I'm gonna start attaching and making some uh, forms that look fairly organic, I hope. It for a second. <clears throat> That's it. I just have to quickly repair a little hole up here. Having a problem blowing.
The object at this point is just to try to get that seal to be as smooth as possible. I'm going to reform it later. I just want to get rid of any line. Get me some more bean bags. This is thank you. Thank you.
that wasn't supposed to happen. <laughs> um, could I have one of those cutters again, the red handle cutters?
Anyway, um, the process is basically putting more and more pieces on here. That's sort of where the, the bottom part of the trunk is. And then pulling them, um, necking them down. Periodically, um, you get to a point and you can make a sharp uh, bend to one side. And that's where you put another one, two, or three more pieces and neck them down. And to make a full-blown tree takes many, many hours. But we only have limited time, so that's the, the, the beginning of it. Now I want to show you basically, once the glass is done, um, how do you turn it into something that lights up? And we're going to move to show you the equipment uh, that we sort of set up to do this. So move down this way. Switch glasses again. So this is um, a tree that I, I made. Um, same kind of base. Uh, this glass that you see here is actually uranium glass. Um, a supply. This was made pre-World War II. And right now, we've connected it to uh, a, a tube here that goes to um, a vacuum manifold. We have a vacuum pump, um, various gauges, uh, electronic gauges and mechanical gauges, as well as a tank full of inert gas. So it's connected to a, a tank like this. Um, in this case, we're going to be filling this piece with krypton gas. So we start the vacuum pump here. And so right now we're evacuating it. We 
we get the lights lowered a little bit? Thank you. This is a testing coil. This will uh, illuminate anything that's under a vacuum. And we use it for leak checking. And we've already checked this one. It's free of leaks. But you can see how it lights up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to flush this out a couple times with inert gas. Normally, this whole portion is inside of a kiln. We, to get the water vapor and all the impurities out of this tube, we bake this at high temperature. Um, typically, we'll put this in and anneal it at about 1,000 degrees. Then when the temperature comes down below the strain point, somewhere 750 degrees Fahrenheit or so, then we'll turn the vacuum pump on and all the vaporized impurities will pull them out. But since we don't have a kiln here, and it would make a very dull video if we were just looking at the outside of a kiln, um, I'm just going to close the vacuum valve and put some gas in. And evacuate that. I'm going to do that uh, one more time. Each time I flush, I'm basically diluting any um, impurities that are left in there. Now there's a couple different ways we can fill this. We can fill it so this tree just makes a gentle glow, or we can fill it to a much higher pressure where we'll get a lot of filamentary lines of uh, plasma, basically, that will move all over uh, the inside. And I think I'm going to try the second uh, way. But I might try fill it to a low pressure just to make it glow initially, and then add more gas later. So let's do that. So I'm going to put just a little gas in. And turn the power supply on. Well, I guess I've already got pretty high pressure in there. Um, you can see that's what it looks like. If I put a little bit more gas, just a little bit more, try it again. All right. Assuming, I guess we need another torch over here. This one won't reach. The little one? Yeah. Uh, right here, okay. Over here, maybe. So I'm just going to seal it off. I'm going to actually seal it off with a little bit of this tube left on here. In case I don't like the, the look of it, I can open it up again and evacuate it a second time. It's always a good idea when you're making a plasma piece is to do this. In case something goes wrong, you can open it up again 
and redo it. You can always, after it's set for a day and you're sure you like it, you can tip it off short. The reason I can't test it with this connected is because this is high voltage in here. This is grounded. So you may have seen that the discharge went instantly towards this vacuum manifold because it's grounding out the energy. All right, so I'm going to try to get out of the way and Let's see what it looks like. And you can see this uh, uranium glass is actually fluorescing. Because in the krypton discharge, uh, we have um, a lot of ultraviolet. We're grounding out here a bit. There we go. And we have another uh, display that I've already made over here. And this one is uh, a similar tree in clear glass, but this one is neon filled. And that's uh, just a low pressure. Low pressure neon. Um, virtually, no matter how much pressure with neon gas you put into this, you won't ever get the filamentary discharge. You need uh, krypton or xenon to, to get that. 